Hi, everyone. Welcome to our first dentistry presentation of the evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm just going to go through a few housekeeping things. Um, so our first presentation is from James Cook University, um, Wendy Hampton, who is the manager of international relations. Um, we are having a pretty strict time schedule, so um, we're going to keep it to 15 minutes. If there are questions at the end, please type them in the chat and we'll try to get to as many as we can. Um, but otherwise, you'll see my face pop up um, a couple minutes before we start. So I'll hand it off to Wendy now. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, can, can you just let me know if you can hear me okay? I've been having some audio issues. And if you can see the presentation in presentation mode. I can't see chat at the moment. So I can hear you and see you, which means everyone else can as well. Um, I'm going fantastic. to go through the chat at the end if there's any questions as well. Okay, fantastic, thank you. Um, so welcome everybody. Uh, I know it's evening there, it's, it's morning here and it's a beautiful day. I'm going to share a little bit of information about James Cook University's dentistry program. And if you can see my background and my video, that's actually our dentistry building in the background there. Um, at the end, though, I'll be back in the JCU room, so please uh, feel free to come along and ask uh, your questions there. So, James Cook University is ranked in the top 2% of universities in the world. Uh, we are in the top 50 universities under 50 years old, and we can only continue to say that for another year because we turned 50 uh, just in the past 12 months. Uh, so we're a young university, our dentistry program and our dentistry building is uh, state of the art and very um, modern in, in terms of our teaching practices. And I'll go through some detail about the dentistry program specifically in a moment. But I wanted to give you a little bit of an overview about um, the, the university itself. So uh, James Cook University is a comprehensive university. The dentistry program is taught at our Cairns campus, so located in the northern part of Australia. Um, probably a very different climate to where most of you are right now. So uh, Kansas is a tropical climate. The big dark shadow you can see in the ocean in the map in front of you is the Great Barrier Reef. Kansas itself is a city of about 160,000 people. It's one of the two largest cities on the east coast in the northern part of Australia, along with Townsville, which is where our other campus is and where our medicine program is taught. Uh, and the Kansas campus is about 4,000 students. So in terms of a study space, um, it's a fantastic space for you to be able to concentrate on your studies. We have on-campus accommodation. Uh, we have a lot of dentistry students who live in that accommodation and it's quite new as well, which is lovely. Um, in terms of location related to other parts um, of Australia that you might have heard of, we are about uh, a two hour flight to Brisbane, two and a half to Sydney and three to Melbourne. Uh, and then across to the West is, is quite a long distance. Location wise, we are, um, our campuses are in spectacular spaces. So we're in um, about half an hour between the reef, the rainforest and the outback from each of our campuses. But Cairns itself is very close to the reef and the rainforest. In fact, the campus is actually located in the rainforest. Uh, this is just an image of Cairns City. Some of you may, you may have visited. It's a very popular destination for people to come and see um, the reef and the rainforest in particular when they come to Australia uh, for the first time and then often they'll they'll come back to Cairns after that. Uh, the campus is located to the northern part of Cairns along the northern beaches and it's about a 20 minute drive from the city centre. This is the, the campus here and I wasn't kidding when I said that it's in the rainforest. You can see that beautiful forest surrounding the campus um, and right down in the bottom right hand corner you can see the dentistry um, facilities, which, as I said, are, are very new, uh, just over 10 years old. Um, the blue dot where it says accommodation, uh, I'm not imagining things. Uh, that's where the new accommodation is that I mentioned. Um, there were about 300 rooms, uh, self-contained and, and self-catering facilities. But um, it's so new that this image doesn't actually have the accommodation in it. So it's really, really beautiful. Um, and the, the top floors even have views through to the reef. I didn't want to spend too long on that. Uh, I wanted to get straight into the dentistry specifics. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, the dentistry program is delivered at our Cairns campus. It's a five year BDS program. Um, you do need to have English chemistry and mathematics uh, for entry as a minimum and uh, the scores that you would require depending on the, the uh, province that you're in 
um, it's probably best to check with Austrex on specific for that, specifics for that. Um, it was established in 2009, so as I mentioned, very, very new facilities, and we had our first international graduates in uh, 2013, uh, sorry, 2016. Uh, we are very, very much focused on students having a, a highly practical experience in a really large range of practical locations. So while we have state-of-the-art facilities on campus in Cairns and also in Townsville, where you can undertake some practical experiences, you'll find that throughout the program, you undertake experiences in all kinds of different areas, which really increase um, your ability to, to think on your feet to be able to, uh, to work with, with different um, sizes of health facilities uh, and, and also different levels of health, health facilities. So while, you know, you might be learning on state-of-the-art facilities, it's really good to know that, you know, should you find yourself in a location that doesn't have those, because of the high level of practical experience you have, you're able to draw on all of your experience to still provide um, excellent dental care no matter where you are. Um, our focus is on rural, remote and tropical health uh, and also Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander um, health and, and global health and our tropical location really aligns well uh, with those uh, goals, I suppose, of our program. The, the way that we teach is quite integrated um, and, as I said, highly practical. So you are working very closely um, in the first few years uh, in the simulation laboratories and then you switch to the other side of the building where you're working directly with patients. Uh, and and our, our aim is that, um, as I said, students have so much uh, experience to draw on when they graduate that they're, you know, able to um, work effectively as dentists anywhere. Uh, we have a, a little bit of a tagline that we refer to our programs, and I, I think it's beautiful and it speaks perfectly to the, the type of student that would work well with our program. So um, the adventure skills and impact um, line is more than just a, you know, a tagline for you. It's something to really consider in the way that we teach um, and, and the way that you will learn. Uh, these are some of the facilities, uh, just, a, just a snapshot. You can also uh, go onto YouTube and there's a, a 360 um, virtual tour of our dentistry facilities. Um, really quite beautiful um, place to, to study and learn. Here is a, a brief breakdown of the five years. So you can see uh, that your, your hands-on experience grows as you progress through the program. So you do work um, in private practice and in our JCU facilities. And then we go, you know, have more engagement with uh, schools in the area and, and um, youth health. Then you go through to community and research and then higher level of clinical experience. Uh, we have options for students to undertake experiences overseas during their studies, if that's what they want to do. Uh, and it's certainly highly encouraged to do that. Um, normally, uh, I obviously should, you know, make a have a caveat around that. At the moment, there are, are some limitations on students' ability to be able to travel freely. Uh, but but usually, this is, is very much an embedded part of our program. Uh, and, and really, uh, in locations where you would be delivering um, high levels of healthcare and support to communities that are really seeking that kind of support, and, and that's, um, you know, part of the the meaningful of, um, social accountability component of our program. Uh, students will also undertake experiences in rural and remote areas uh, of Australia. And we have uh, many locations, as you can see, around Queensland, but also um, in the Northern Territory and Tasmania for students to have those experiences. Uh, this is just an example of, of uh, one of the street clinics in Cambodia, uh, an area where, uh, again, JCU engages quite a lot. We have some feedback here from some previous graduates, uh, and I, I just like to share this because it, it's important to understand that student voice. Uh, we do have quite a few students in our program too who are uh, who have siblings in the program or family members or family friends and, and have heard about us through the experience that um, their family members or friends have had. Uh, but you can see that, you know, we have we have students whose initial aim is to is to come to Australia, undertake their studies, and then, you know, immediately return to Canada. And some who, you know, continue with that, um, with that aim throughout their degree, but others who are, are very much keen to, you know, as they've developed through the program and had experience and made connections to actually stay and, and, and um, practice in Australia um, for, you know, a short or a longer period of time afterwards. Um, we have students, uh, graduates, who, who do gra graduate and go and work in, in city locations, as you can see from the third comment there. 
but we also have um, graduates who who then um, develop a passion or, or um, build on a passion that they already had for um, working in in areas um, maybe that you know might not have the same facilities as a city clinic uh, and and then you know go on to maybe work in more rural and remote settings um, high levels of engagement with our academic staff are really key to our program and um, we work quite um, well it's actually not us that work on it as much as the students but students work quite closely together to develop a real sense of cohort. So the entire program um, has uh, 80 seats, so about 80 students every year, very, very carefully monitored. So it's, it may be slightly different to 80, but it's, it's not a lot more or a lot less. And we have about 15 international places every year. So the, the students in that cohort of 80 really get to know each other very well. They work very closely together. They support each other through um, any areas that they might need to, to practice or work on. We also have a very strong uh, dentistry student association who also help with um, things like bringing in professional development opportunities for students and, and again, helping to, um, to build your relationships, not just in other students who are in the same grade level as you, but throughout the, the depth of the program so that even when you're in your first year, you'll be able to, to have connections and contacts with more experienced students. Um, Here's just an, a few more images uh, of students on placement and some of our placement locations. Uh, there are some, some pretty incredible experiences that you can have. Uh, the student in the bottom left is a Canadian student who, who did his placement in Weeper. Um, if you want to Google Weeper, it's, it's in the Gulf area of Queensland, so the, the northwest area. Uh, it, is, it is a more remote area, um, but he just had a fantastic experience. Uh, Weeper itself is, is a hub for healthcare in the, in the Cape, in the Cape York area of Australia. Uh, and yeah, he had a life-changing experience doing that. Um, so that's it from me in terms of the formal presentation. I know we're quite pushed for time and I, I wanted to have a chance to see if there were any questions you wanted to, be, to respond to, Sarah. Um, I haven't been monitoring the chat, but maybe you could throw to me if there's something I can help with. Yep, perfectly. We've got a couple minutes. Um, so there are a few questions. Thanks so much, Wendy. Um, so the first question um, regarding entry requirements, what percentage of English, how many chemistry courses and which math would be preferable? Okay, that's really specific and really best discussed with your individual, probably with Austrec, honestly, because it depend, depends on the, um, the area that you're coming from. And we have some students who are doing IB, we have some students who are doing the Ontario system and, and other systems. So rather than answering specifics here, it's best to, to speak to the experienced counsellors at Austrec. Yep, absolutely. Um, if there are any questions, we do have a couple of minutes, so feel free to pop them in the chat um, and I will read them out. Um, but otherwise, like Wendy said, if you do have any specific questions or any that come up after this presentation, feel free to head back to Career Echo. Um, you can go in the JCU chat room as well as the Austrec chat room um, and chat with some of our admissions officers as well for, for, for specific requirements like that. Um, okay, one more question came in actually. Does IB give anyone a competitive advantage on getting accepted versus the regular um, OSSD? No, no. And it's important to understand that um, with dentistry and our medicine program, that while the score is important, it's only one of the elements that is looked at in terms of your eligibility for the program. So I really encourage you to, um, to look at the application forms that are still there. We don't have our 2022 application forms online yet, but the 2021 forms are there. And look at the types of questions that you're asked for in the dentistry application. So the scores are, in, are important and certainly, you know, the higher, the better in terms of your academic scores but it's, it's, it's a much more rounded process than that. So we really do look at your responses to the, the key questions that we ask in the application. Thank you. We can get to one more question. So it's kind of a mixed question here. Um, so what are the tuition fee structure and does tuition cover clinical practices? Okay, so the tuition is uh, listed in our international guide. I'm really conscious, Sarah, that you need the, the space, so I, the, the room space. So yeah. I'm gonna head back to the career echo area and that way if anyone has um, questions, I can answer them there and, and not feel pushed for time. Yeah, but um, I can also share the link to the, the guide that contains the tuition fee information. 
Great. Well, thank you so much for joining. Um, great start to the evening in our dentistry room. So thank you so much, Wendy. Um, and like we said, head back to the room to get all the rest of your questions answered. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much.